morning, Hancock Field. I'm Senior Airman Sarah Schreiber. And I'm Master Sergeant Eric Miller, and welcome to the March 2015 UTA. Ashton B. Carter became the 25th Defense Secretary this past month as he was sworn into office at the White House on February 17th. Secretary Carter was Deputy Secretary of Defense from 2011 to 2013, serving as the Department of Defense Chief Operating Officer. March is Women's History Month, which highlights the contributions of women to events in history and society. Secretary of the Air Force Deborah Lee James honors the hard work and contributions women have made in the past and present. American women have worked tirelessly since the birth of our great nation to guarantee our freedoms and to advance the cause of liberty. They have stood side by side with their brothers in arms on revolutionary battlefields, they've soared into combat over Iraq and Afghanistan, and they continue to this day to demonstrate grit, courage, and determination. This teamwork among our airmen is what makes our Air Force the greatest on the planet. This month, we honor our women for their contributions to our country and their contributions to our defense. You can find more tributes and timelines on women's history on the defense.gov website under special reports in the news tab. Now for a quick look at our weather forecast for this UTA. Snow showers on Saturday with a high near 27. Chance of precipitation is 50% and possibly more snow on Sunday with a high of 34. Chance of precipitation is 40%. More than 116,000 Americans are injured and over 1,300 killed every year on snowy, slushy, or icy pavement. A car driving 60 miles per hour takes about 200 feet to stop, but on black ice it takes about five times as long. A couple safety tips when driving in adverse conditions is to reduce your speed, watch for black ice, and lengthen your stopping time. And for tips staying on your feet, take it slow walking in snow, wear sensible footwear, step down, not out of cars, and focus on your footing. With all the ice and snow lately, the month of June might still seem far away. But if your physical fitness has maybe suffered during these cold months, the base fitness test in June, being three months away, is not that far off. So let's check in with Staff Sergeant Anderson, who has our PT Tip of the Month. Hey there, Sergeant Anderson, here to give you the Fitness Tip of the Month to help you get ready for this upcoming PT test. Check out the resources available to you to help you achieve your fitness goals and to help you on this upcoming fitness assessment. These resources are available to you on the SharePoint under the Fitness tab. Keep in mind proper form while completing these exercises. Remember head to toe, rigid form, hand shoulder width apart, elbows 90 degree angles, locked out position. Also remember, keep your hands to your chest, elbows touching knees, and back fully hitting the ground. And that's your fitness tip of the month. Check out this photo sent in by Senior Master Sergeant Gershbacher of airmen helping to clear snow off her mother's roof. Three airmen from the 174th helped their fellow airmen on their day off. Master Sergeants Frank Fasciolo and James Fleming and Staff Sergeant Allison Seguin. We love getting photos like this, so please continue to send them to us here in Public Affairs. Please assign a unit Public Affairs representative to help tell your unit's story. Contact Lieutenant Brett Decker here in Public Affairs for training. Daylight savings time kicks in early tomorrow morning, March 8th, the annual sign that spring is slowly on its way. Members of the 274th Air Support Operations Squadron completed close air support training at Barry M. Goldwater Range in Gillibend, Arizona this past February. The training was a joint effort that involved JTACs from the United Kingdom and close air support provided by A-10 Thunderbolt IIs from Davis Monthan Air Force Base and A F-16 Fighting Falcons from Luke Air Force Base. The training is required for the 274th Joint Tactical Air Controllers to sustain their readiness qualification. This gives us the opportunity to go out there and uh, train with live aircraft, with live ordnance, uh, get up on an observation point or an OP and actually see bombs being delivered on target and coming up with a, a varying degree of uh, scenarios. You're responsible for uh, you know, a lot of ordnance coming off an aircraft. You're, you can be in a very effective combat multiplier. 
On March 14th, the 274th will be conducting joint air assault training with the New York Air Army National Guard's 42nd Combat Aviation Brigade in order to enhance their combat skills. We will be showcasing this exercise on April's UTA update. The 152nd Air Operation Group conducted the first New York Air National Guard's virtual flag training exercise this past month. The 152nd trained on tactics and procedures under realistic threat scenarios. Over 100 personnel from the Air and Army National Guard, as well as active duty service members, participated. The 152nd intends to host this exercise every two to three years. Over 30 airmen from the 174th Civil Engineering Squadron continued to work hard while deployed overseas repairing and constructing infrastructures, improving utilities, communication and electrical systems, and constructing supporting critical ISR missions around the AOR. The New York Air National Guard's 109th Airlift Wing wrapped up its 27th year of Antarctica science support last week. The Schenectady-based unit supports National Science Foundation's Antarctica program as part of Operation Deep Freeze, providing military logistics support for ongoing research effort. And the Air Force Times has reported that New York lawmakers are promoting Niagara Falls Air Reserve Station to be the third main operating base for the new KC-46A Pegasus tanker, which is expected to begin replacing the nearly six-decade-old KC-135 Stratotanker in 2016. The KC-46 delivers more fuel at all ranges and from shorter runways, three times more cargo pallets, up to twice as many passengers, and over 30 percent more aeromedical evacuation patients than the KC-135 that it is replacing. Now that's the Niagara Air Force Reserve. As many of you know, our New York Air National Guard unit based in Niagara, the 107th Airlift Wing, is undergoing a conversion to the MQ-9 Reaper. Ancil ancillary training scheduled for this UTA covers the No Fear Act. The training is based on United States federal law that seeks to discourage federal managers and supervisors from engaging in unlawful discrimination and retaliation. And a defense driving course is being held the 14th and 15th of April. You have to attend both nights from 1645 to 1945 if you sign up. If you are interested, contact the Wing Safety Office for more information. This past February UTA, Brigadier Generals Don Deskins and Gary Apel spoke to the members of Hancock Field about the Military Association of New York in conjunction with the National Guard Association of the United States. The organization represents the interests of New York military members in the state legislature, Congress, and executive branch and 174th members donated blood during a blood drive. The blood donated is broken down into plasma, whole blood, and platelets for cancer patients. Last UGA, the 174th conducted a unit recall readiness inspection. This unit recall was deemed effective by 174th Inspector General Lieutenant Colonel Chuck Hudson, but has room for improvement. When transmitting the recall message, the caller must read it verbatim. A few callers left messages with spouses, which is not allowed and some callers text message the recall message, which caused confusion. Remember when texting to be concise, an example would be, call me. And here are some final reminders. Join Mike Petinelli, our 174th Director of Psychological Health, for a coffee break at the DFAC this Sunday from 9 to 10.30. Mike will also be providing an overview on the Breathe to Relax app and the benefits of tactical breathing for stress management. Remember to encourage civilian employers to attend the upcoming ESGR event in August. A date in August has not been set, but please start spreading the news. And if you plan on working the state fair this year, orders must be in prior to August 7th. Prior to speaking at any event, please contact Public Affairs to be briefed. Don't forget to register through Family Readiness for Bring Your Child to Work Day on April 23rd for kids 8 to 12 years old. Check out the Go for Green program at the DFAC this weekend, which is a nutritional labeling system that makes it easy for airmen to recognize healthy food items when eating in the DFAC. Food items that are labeled green means eat the item often. Green foods keep our airmen fit to fight. And give feedback about the program by filling out surveys located on the DFAC tables. And the All Services Club on Hancock Field has some events planned for the upcoming months. Live music tonight with Tim McMahon. Yearly club membership is $12. And keep up to date with the latest news around the U.S. military, Air National Guard, and Hancock Field by following the 174th on social media. That's your March 2015 UTA update. Have a great drill, everyone.